of, there we go. All right. Hey everybody, Jordan here, the PH is silent, and this is the beginning of a series of videos that is going to run for all the month of December. I don't know what I'm doing. I will tell you that right off the get-go. So I wanted to create a custom homebrew world. I've never done this before, and I've always played games in the Forgotten Realms, D&D, &D, and or, or the settings that have been provided for me. And I will arguably say that I always make it my own. I'll take this setting and I'll I'll be like, put a Jordan spin on it in some way. So you're really playing in the Jordan Forgotten Realms. I throw out the bits I don't like, I keep the bits that I do like. but. I've never created a campaign setting for a, for a fantasy role-playing game from the ground up, and I wanted to do that challenge. Now, a lot of YouTubers in the month of December will do something called Vlogmas, where they, they do a video blog every day for a month. I decided to incorporate both of those, and so we're going to create a campaign setting um, through uh, the month of December. And we'll, we'll see. I'm really nervous because I've never done anything like this and vlogging every day is uh, kind of intimidating, but I think it will be a good exercise to keep me motivated and keep me uh, focused because if I have you to hold me accountable, i.e. I just was like, I have to release a video today, then uh, I think I'll be more, more in, in I'll, I'll be more likely to finish this whole process. Um, I found a website that is a Creative Commons course for writing uh, novels, creating a fantasy world, or creating a world for your novels. And it seems kind of directed at like young adult novels for NaNoWriMo, like the November writing challenge, the book challenge. But I, there's a lot of really good principles there, and I wanted to go through that. So if you are interested, there are links down below in the doobly-doo, and you can go on this journey with me, and maybe through the month of December, we can all have really cool homebrew worlds for our, uh, yeah, for our game. I think it'll be really cool. Um, I'm excited. I'm nervous. Uh, and uh, oh, I also wanted to say, on top of the uh, Creative Commons uh, book challenge thing, there is uh, Absolute Tabletop made a explain your custom campaign setting in 30 days. And so every day they were asking another question that you should answer about your campaign setting. So for the month of December, um, for this Vlogmas in a way, I'm going to do a video every day and we're going to do the exercise that the uh, book challenge website wants us to do. And then I'm going to answer the question that uh, the Absolute Tabletop uh, people have presented to us. Um, I will link both of those down below uh, in the uh, comments. And yeah, maybe you guys can do this with me. Tell me all about your world. I think it'd be really cool. Uh, this is gonna be day one. So I'm, I'm filming this on uh, November 30th so that I can release it tomorrow on the 1st. And we're gonna go all the way till uh, December 30th. Okay, so hi everybody. Um, this is where we're gonna start. I, uh, this is Notion.so. If you are new to some of my videos, I've made a video about this. In fact, I'll, I'll link it somewhere um, so you can watch a video about Notion. And I use Notion to game prep. Now I've already worked a lot on my campaign setting, uh, which is known as Endegar. And, uh, but I, I hope to go over it with you guys and if the exercise is something that I kind of need to do, uh, the, or sorry, if the exercise is something that I've already done, then um, we, we'll talk about that. So right here I've made a new uh, Notion uh, page called 30 Day World Building. Um, and in here, I have created these little, uh, uh, like I can cl click this and create today's challenge. Um, and then when I, I can write underneath that challenge uh, the various things that I want to do. So uh, if we go here, this is the Fantasy World Builder Guide. And this is a Creative Commons license. Uh, in 2007, they created this. And it's it, it, they've got PDFs and, and uh, ebook formats, too, if you want to read this. But every day we're supposed to go through and talk about the, the things that we're going to do. So day one is climate and variety. Um, and let's, yeah, so how often have you, oh, maybe I can make this a little bigger. Actually, what, Jordan, 
you have your logo in the corner and nobody can see what they're supposed to read. Oh, it's awful. Um, okay. I will fix that in later videos. Uh, how often have you ever read a book or story on the ice planet or the desert planet? These things simply do not exist. Humans are immensely adaptable. If there's a section of the world they don't live on, they will do their best to figure out how to get there. There are now people living on platforms on top of the sea, as well as people living in habitats under it. The Middle East, the most hotly contested region in the world, is in the middle of a desert. The reason why books and stories try to limit the climate to one type or another is because the author wanted to hit upon a mood or theme by presenting the story in a setting that is somehow related to that mood. Who doesn't have some emotional response to a frozen wilderness or a lush, verdant field? Uh, today's exercise is go out or get out a map or go to an international website uh, like National Geographic and look everywhere. Antarctica, Saudi Arabia, the rainforest of Brazil, the rainforest of central California. Look at how different the climates behave and appear. The first 15 minute exercise is to write down all of the different climates you can think of. And if you need to just say a city name, uh, do it. Sometimes Seattle is more evocative than uh, the northern damp temperate climates. Uh, write these names down in a list. Then go through that list and write one or two words that describe how that climate, either the word itself or the way the place itself may have made you feel. If you've been there before, try to stick to abstract objectives, emotional words if you can, but nouns are also okay. Put this list in your notebook. Tomorrow, you'll really need it. Um, so I'm gonna have to get a notebook. Uh, and that is something that I will uh, work on. So let's jump back over here. Uh, today's challenge, climate and variety. Um, and we're gonna say, uh, uh, and I'll do this as soon as possible and then we'll talk about it tomorrow. Um, but I don't think I'm gonna film it. So climate and variety, we're gonna do, um, yeah. Take note of different uh, areas, write it in your journal. Uh, get a journal uh, and uh, use descriptive adjectives. Um, okay, yeah, so then this will be kind of cool because I'll be able to toggle back and forth the things that we write in there. Um, and then, so this over here is uh, Absolute Tabletop in 2018 had a Kickstarter for their Dragon Grin uh, campaign setting. Yeah, and so uh, this was really cool. Um, I, I found this, and it was my 30-day world challenge, and they wanted a whole bunch of people to participate, and I, I wish I would have participated, but I didn't. So we're gonna go, we're gonna start at 320, which is gonna be 12-1, and we're gonna go uh, all the way for 30 days, um, kind of following this. And I thought this would just kind of be fun. So uh, the first one is, what is the 30-second elevator pitch for your world? Um, this, that's hard. So, Endegar is a, uh, I, I had an idea, and this isn't 30 seconds, but I had an idea to build a world that um, was kind of run by warlocks. Humans will take the easiest path through most things. So if your options are studious hard work to be a wizard and gain magical power that way, or make a quick pact with some kind of foreign entity, then that foreign entity, uh, or you're going to, humans are gonna do that. So I liked the idea that uh, celestials, fiends, um, uh, out creatures from the far beyond, the far realm, they're using humans to kind of dominate this world of Endegar uh, because they can. And humans are like that. Like I keep thinking about Lord of the Rings and like humans would 100% are, are gonna be seduced by the one ring, whereas the other races might not be. And so if warlock powers are the equivalent of that, the easy way to get power, and it's like, it's infectious, uh, why don't we have a whole system of warlocks that uh, uh, kind of, I don't know, run the world? So, okay, this is gonna be fun. Uh, where's my phone? Let's do 30 seconds and I'll try to talk about Endegar in a 30 second pitch and we can see if I can do this. Um, clock is what I need on my phone. This is really interesting. Timer, uh, 30 seconds. 
Um, and I'll, I'll try to put it on the screen. I don't think I know how. That's, mm, I'm not good at that. So, um, oh, actually, no, never mind. It's too late. Um, so a 30 second pitch. Ooh, I should probably write this down, but we're gonna just, we're just gonna go. I'm gonna put my phone here. It's gonna freak me out. Okay. Um, 30 second pitch. Endegar is a world of warlock magic superseding regular magic. So a lot of the human race has kind of dominated the countryside. And other races such as dwarves have gone underground, the elves have gone into the woods, and humans have made cities. It is up to the majority of the races to counteract the fiends that are now controlling uh, that aspect of Endegar using their human soldiers. Okay, that's my pitch. Uh, ladies and gentlemen, that is day one. Um, stay tuned for tomorrow. Subscribe, tell your friends that we're doing this. It's gonna be a lot of fun. And uh, yeah, we're gonna go through the whole month and then hopefully uh, Endegar will be a little more fleshed out. So uh, I appreciate you guys being here and I will see you in tomorrow. Take care. <laughs>